The extrude, revolve, sweep, and loft features we just reviewed have one thing in common. They all require two-dimensional sketches. There are some features that do not require sketches at all. These features are referred to as applied features because they are directly applied in 3D. The most common applied feature is the fillet, which is used to break sharp edges in a model. This is the fillet icon. Remember, this is an applied feature, so I don't have to begin a sketch to access it. In fact, if I begin a sketch, the fillet command will not be available. If you have any trouble identifying the right icon, you can also access the fillet command from the drop-down menu under Insert, Features, Fillet. As you can see, there are many properties available when creating fillets. We won't cover all of the options right now. Instead, let's take a look at some key areas. Here at the top, we choose from two tabs, Manual and Fillet Expert. The Fillet Expert option is designed to simplify the creation of fillets when working with complex geometry by automatically resolving geometry problems. For this lesson, we'll be focusing on creating fillets manually. First, we start by defining the type of fillet. Constant radius is the default setting, and also the most commonly used. Variable radius and face fillets are generally used when dealing with more complex geometry, such as consumer products made up of ergonomic shapes. Let's continue with the constant radius fillet, and I'll come back and show you the full round fillet type. In this next field, the radius of the fillet is specified, either by using the arrows or by typing in a value directly. Once the radius is set, we have to tell SOLIDWORKS which edges we wish to break. The light blue color tells me that this is an active selection window. This means that SOLIDWORKS is waiting for input. If I hover my cursor over the window, a pop-up menu will tell me what type of input to use. I can pick an edge, a face, a feature, a loop, or a combination of each. I have previews activated, so as soon as I select an edge, you can immediately see what's going to happen. To accept these settings for the fillet, all I have to do is click the green check and I'm done. The fillet I just created is listed in the Feature Manager tree along with the rest of the features used to create this part. There's no plus sign next to the fillet, like there is next to this extruded boss, because no sketch has been used. If I wish to make changes to the fillet, all I have to do is click on it and select Edit Feature from the pop-up toolbar. By using the Multiple Radius Fillet option, I can specify unique values to each fillet. Each flag that appears allows me to control the radius of the edge it points to. The preview will update as soon as I press Enter on the keyboard or click anywhere else on the screen. Let's edit this fillet once more and take a look at other options. I'll clear the multiple radius fillet option and clear the edges from the selection window. I can pick one edge at a time, right click and select delete. Or I can right click and select clear selections to completely clear the window. I don't have to pick individual edges, I can also pick faces. This can sometimes save me the trouble of having to pick many edges. Notice that every edge associated with this face was affected by the fillet. If I only want to select the outer loop, I can right-click on Edge and pick the Select Loop option. This allows me to switch between the two loops associated with this edge. When creating fillets, you don't have to create them all at once. In fact, sometimes you may wish to break your fillets into several steps to get the results you want. This time, I want to round the four vertical edges. Notice that with the fillet command active, I can actually pick through solid geometry to select edges. If it's difficult to see what edges you're selecting, you can always switch to hidden lines in gray view. Now in a second fillet, I'll select this edge and you'll notice that the fillet will propagate around the perimeter. This is because of this setting, Tangent Propagation. This option causes the fillet to continue as long as there is a tangent edge. There are many more options available with the different types of fillets, but one that can be very helpful is the full round fillet. The full round fillet makes it easy to create rounded faces. For example, I can use a full round fillet to make a tombstone shape out of this block. First, I select the full round fillet type. Now I'm prompted to pick three faces in these selection windows. The side face, the center face, 
and the other side face. The result is the perfect blend of all three faces. Constant radius and full round fillets will help you get going with SolidWorks. In later lessons, we'll revisit fillets to learn how to create more complex geometry. But for now, let's turn our attention to another very common applied feature, the chamfer. Chamfers, like fillets, are used regularly to break sharp edges. The difference is that chamfers break sharp edges with angled instead of rounded faces. The chamfer command is also an applied feature, so it's available without the need for a sketch. It can be launched using the chamfer icon or from the drop-down menu. A chamfer can be applied to an edge, a face, or a vertex. We'll take a look at each option, but first, let's take a look at how to specify the dimensions of a chamfer. When I pick an edge, SolidWorks will give me a preview of the chamfer and display its current dimensions in a flag like this one. I can specify dimensions directly in these fields or in the Property Manager. Currently, I'm using the Angle Distance option for this chamfer. That's why I have the Angle and Distance dimensions available. As I change the angle, you can see the preview update, and the same is true as I change the distance. When using an angle other than 45 degrees, you want to be able to tell SolidWorks which side is the long side and which side is the short side. That's what you can control with the Flip Direction option. These settings are similar when using the Distance Distance option, except you have direct control over each distance rather than using an angle. You can see these fields change to show me two distance values. If I want to make both values the same, I just click the Equal Distance box, and one value now controls both distances. You can see that the Vertex option is not available. This will only be available putting a chamfer on a corner. I'll clear this edge by right-clicking and selecting Clear Selections. Now the Vertex option becomes available. When I pick a corner, I'll be able to set three separate distances, one for each side of this corner. To finish the chamfer, I simply click the check and it's done. By selecting a face when adding a chamfer, each edge of that face is affected. By picking this face, for example, both the inner and outer edges are broken. There's one last setting that's good to know when using chamfers. It's the Keep Features checkbox right down here. If you're working on a model that has a feature very close to an edge, like this boss, you can decide whether the feature will remain after the edge is chamfered or if it should be removed. This only becomes a problem if the chamfer is large enough to affect the feature. If I don't check Keep Features, the boss is removed. If the box is checked, the feature is extended, so it's not lost. Although chamfers are most commonly used to break edges by removing material, they can also be used to add material. The shell feature is another useful tool that can be applied directly to a solid model. It will allow you to take solid geometry and make it hollow. This can be a powerful and time-saving technique when designing parts that call for thin walls such as plastic products. The shell is easy to use. Once you have a solid part like I have here, you activate the shell feature by clicking on this icon or from the drop-down menu under Insert, Feature Shell. The settings are pretty basic. First, since this will become a hollow part, I have to input the wall thickness I want to end up with. Before taking a look at the remaining options here, let's take a look at what results if I finish the feature right now. At first glance, it appears nothing has changed. I do see the addition of the shell in the Feature Manager, but the model appears identical. That is, until we take a look inside. Let's switch to a wireframe display. Now you can see the difference. We have a half inch thick cylinder with the center completely removed. Now let's take a look at the other options we have. 
if I hold my cursor over this window, you'll see a pop-up message that says, Faces to remove. By selecting a face into this window, I'm telling SolidWorks that I want to get rid of that face once the part is hollow. And this is the result. There are two more options we'll look at. This checkbox allows me to specify whether I want the resulting wall thickness to be added to the inside or the outside of the part. When the box is checked, notice that part actually gets bigger. I'll make the shell thicker to make this more obvious. And there you see the result. The last option for the shell is the ability to pick faces that require a different thickness than the rest of the part. For example, if I wanted this part to have a wall thickness of half an inch, but I want the bottom face to have a thickness of three inches, I just select the bottom face into this window. Type in three inches and this is the result. If you're designing a part that's symmetric, you can save yourself time by using the mirror feature. With the mirror feature, you can replicate individual features, faces, or bodies. In this lesson, we'll take a look at mirroring features and one special case of mirroring bodies. When we talk about features, we're talking about 3D geometry, like this cutout here. In order to mirror 3D geometry, we need to have a plane, or a flat face to use as a reference. In this case, if I show the right plane, you can see it passes through the center of this part. I'll be using this plane to mirror the cutout. The mirror feature can be launched using this icon, or from the drop-down menu. Like with other features, all I have to do is go through the options in the Property Manager and click the green check to finish. First, I have to indicate which face or plane I want to use as my reference. I can select the plane here, or from the Feature Manager. Next, I need to specify which feature I wish to mirror. As with the plane, I can either select the feature from the Feature Manager tree or directly from the Graphics window. To select a feature graphically, you must select a face that is unique to that feature. For example, to select the keyhole slot, I need to select one of these faces which is unique to the cut. If you hover your cursor for a second over the face, a flag will also pop up identifying the feature that you're hovering over. After selecting a feature to mirror, right away you can see a preview of the geometry that will be replicated. And to finish, I just click the green check and I'm done. Just like other features, the mirror feature will be listed in the Feature Manager tree. If I need to make a change, I can right-click on it and select Edit Feature. In this case, for example, I can add the boss to replicate both features at the same time. 